All right, so here we are on a wet spring day in Maine, and uh, today I want to discuss a core tenet of forced mensuration or forced measurement, which is uh, measuring tree diameter, or DBH, diameter breast height. Um, so before we begin, you're going to need either what's called a D-tape, which is a specified tool that already has um, predetermined calculations in the tape itself for diameter, or you're going to need a softer measuring tape like that used for tailoring. The tape measure isn't going to work though, it's going to be too, um, a little too rigid and you're not going to be able to get the uh, um, finesse that you need in the measurement. Uh, beyond that, uh, if you have a string or a rope, you can also use that and then measure the, the length afterwards, but really, and especially if you plan on doing this fairly frequently, you're going to want something like a D-tape, so I'll put a link in the description where you can get one of these. Uh, mine happens to be in centimeters today, I don't remember why, I think I picked this up at a garage sale somewhere, so I'm going to be measuring in centimeters. All right. So the first step in determining diameter breast height is you have to find what is uh, breast height, which is 4.5 feet off the ground. And for me, that happens to be exactly right here. But uh, for you, it's going to be different. Um, you know, if you happen to be 4.5 feet high, then it's going to be right at the top of your head. It's going to be a little different for everybody. Um, so take a measuring tape or even your D-tape if it's in uh, nominal inches and uh, measure out 4.5 feet on your body and then you can use that as a reference point to find 4.5 feet up on a tree. You don't want to measure 4.5 feet on a tree every single time you measure diameter. So that's step number one. Once you do that we can get to finding the diameter on the tree. Now we'll start with measuring this hemlock here um, and I'm not sure if you can see with the camera angle or not but as is fairly typical with any tree in the woods there's going to be a lot of irregularities with both the stem and the ground. You know, in this particular case, the stem is pretty regular, but the ground is very irregular. Up here, it's a good foot, foot and a half higher than this side. So this is an important concept to keep in mind. When you're measuring tree diameter, you always want to err towards uh, smaller diameter or less volume. And basically what that means is you take the measurement on the higher end of things. Trees taper as they go up, their diameter decreases. So if you want to be a little more conservative in your measurements, you always want to get slightly higher, which should theoretically reduce the diameter, even if just a little bit. And if you're doing larger scale projects, you know, measuring thousands of trees, that's going to make a notable difference in the end result. But for a single tree, it might not matter too much. So, in this case, the back side is significantly higher than the front, so we're going to take the measurement towards the back side. Now, finding, again, your diameter breast height 4.5 feet off the ground, which for me is right here. Now, well, I mean, it's it's not just for me. It's <laughs> it's objectively right here. So on your D-tape, I'm going to come up to the camera for a minute. A proper D-tape is going to have a hook on it, and hopefully that can focus a hook on it, and so that can easily grab onto the bark, and um, then you can just kind of wrap it around the tree. So we'll go back up, we'll find 4.5, and I'll twig in the way. So I'll stick it in the bark, come all around, and then what you're going to need is kind of eyeball it and make sure it's as straight as possible around the bowl of the tree. You don't want any sag in the back, you don't want it to be substantially slanted one way or the other. Um, and that's going to be a little more difficult on larger trees or trees with a lot of bumps and nooks and crannies on it. Like I said, this is more of an irreg a regular stem, so it's a little easier. So you come back and you match up the markings with zero. And I'm going to grab the camera for a little bit to be able to show you guys that. Alright, so here at the tree, you can see that uh, it's right about... 33.2 centimeters. Make sure you line up that zero. Common mistake you see people do is they might, especially after a long day, they might start, uh, you know, measuring up to that one, which is going to be inaccurate. Now, one thing that's important to notice about this D tape, like I was saying, it has the calculations built in. So this is in centimeters. I know it kind of looks like an inch, but it's centimeters. And the distance between 32 and 33 
is longer than what you'd think of as a centimeter, and that's because uh, it has the calculations, because you're measuring circumference. This is circumference when you go around the tree. And this has the built-in calculation to convert circumference to uh, diameter. So I think circumference is pi d. Um, so it's basically dividing by uh, 3.14. Um, so yeah. So that uh, brings me to the next important point, which is if you are using a standard tape measure that's just measuring in nominal inches or nominal centimeters or if you live in a very large forest, maybe meters, I wouldn't recommend it though. Um, you're going to need to convert that into diameter because you are actually measuring circumference. So circumference is found by um, multiplying pi by diameter. So in order to uh, find the diameter from circumference, you have to divide the circumference by 3.14159 if you want to get particular. Um, so that's, that's how you convert that. So it's important to not just measure the circumference and call that diameter. You're not measuring diameter that way, you're measuring circumference. Likewise, if you're just taking a rope, measure the length of rope um, that you used from, you know, match up the two ends together, and then measure that length out, divide that by pi, and you'll come up with the diameter. So, I'm going to try to find a tree, it's starting to rain actually pretty hard, I'm not sure you can hear it. I'm going to find a tree that has an irregularity right at 4.5 feet, just so you can see kind of what you would do in that circumstance. So I'm going to walk around here and try to find one, I'm sure there's one around, so hang tight. Okay, there's actually one right behind me. Um, I'm not going to actually measure it because this is substantially higher than 4.5 feet, it's probably 6 feet high. But let's just make believe for a minute and say that this was right at 4.5. So you can see that's going to add a substantial amount to your diameter if you were just to take that as the uh, diameter of the tree. It's going to give you a really skewed reading. So like I was saying earlier, um, you always want to be more conservative in your estimates. The tree, on average, is going to be thicker towards the base than more up the bowl um, because the trees taper. So you're going to want to take the measurement uh, directly above that defect. Not below, but above. And that'll get you your reading. So, that's what you do. So I think we're going to call it good. Uh, there's not a whole lot to say about measuring tree diameter other than how to do it and do it properly. I think, uh, you know, if you don't work in forestry or if you're not used to any sort of scientific literature around the subject, you don't realize that there's a very particular way to do it and there's data that can be derived from measuring tree diameter. For example, you can find the volume of individual trees um, or do larger inventory projects from finding tree diameter. What I'll do is I'll link uh, to a blog post that I wrote that has um, some of those volume tables that you can, can use um, to derive volume from diameters. And just as you study these things, you're gonna come across references to tree diameter. And it's important to understand that, you know, this is the particular um, way to do it and the agreed upon way to do it. You don't just wrap a tree or wrap a tape around any tree at any height and call it good. You got to do it somewhat accurately. And, you know, my caveat with all that in the woods is that nothing is ever regular. There's always going to be some irregularities and nothing's ever going to be perfect, but you do the best you can. So hopefully this helps. And, um, yeah, like I said, uh, if you do this pretty frequently, I would recommend picking up a D-tape. Saves you a lot of time and hassle and miscalculation. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, give, uh, give the blog post a visit that I'll link down in the description and see for yourself how exactly you can use these measurements and you know, see what cool data you can find out in your woods. All right, till next time, later.